All right, with peanut get with peanut gallery's diatribe about uh, Ring of Honor's booking in general, let's talk about uh, Death Before Dishonor because it's actually a very relatively strong pay per view every single year, mm -hmm. and it always happens. But the here's the problem with Ring of Honor's um, Death Before Dishonor almost immediately. Okay. There's not a consistent month that it's in ever. It always happens at the end of the summer season. But here's the issue. Um, it happens in July, August, and in September. Mm -hmm. There's never a defined month, like with your Summer Slams, where it's always at a certain time. Right. And very minimally is it anywhere else. Uh, you know, Death Before Dishonor, a uh, very fresh history, their first show. Mm -hmm. Let's bring that up. Uh, their first Death Before Dishonor happened on July 19th, 2003. At the Rexplex in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Um, there is no information regarding the Rexplex at all. To what I could find, the capacity for the arena was about 600 people. Right. So not the biggest of our venues, but Ring of Honor always started very, um, uh, very humbly. Let's put it that right. way. The show featured 11 matches, main evented by Samoa Joe, defeating Paul London for the Ring of Honor World Champion. He defended the championship successfully. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are like, oh my God, CM Punk was the first one. Honestly, Paul London was the first major indie signing for WWE ever, I huh. believe. Because Paul London was a big main eventer in Ring of Honor, and he was huge. Right. When talked about for tape trading and shit, you really made that drinking out of the wine a lot more complicated than it should have been. <laughs> no, we're fine. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so the this card also featured CM Punk versus Raven in a dog collar match, and AJ Styles and Amazing Red versus the Briscoes for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. If you really want to know how dated the Briscoes are in Ring of Honor, this show happened in 2003. Jesus. 2003. The Briscoes are there. They're, they're there. They're not going anywhere anytime no. soon. The second Ring of Honor show is very unique in its own way. Number one, um, the new logo because the old logo was dog shit. But. Right. This was the first major professional wrestling organization, at least on the indie scene, is concerned, that had their um, pay-per-view on two different nights. Mm -hmm. the, this happened on uh, July 23rd, 2004 and July 25th, 2004. Okay. And it happened in uh, the first show happened in the Mullerner Center. Or the Mullerner Building in Watudosa, I butcher that immensely, W A U W A T O S A. Wauwatosa? Wauwatosa, thank you. Wisconsin. And night two happened in the Folger Field House in Chicago Ridge, Illinois. Here's a problem there were a lot of repeat matches between these two. Mm -hmm. So basically what these wrestlers had to do, they had to wrestle night number one in Wisconsin. Okay. Then they had to get into a car and drive to Chicago in one night mm -hmm. on a Saturday and make the show on Sunday for another pay-per-view. Right. Fun shit. Let's put it that way. Right. Now, night number one had eight matches, main evented. By the Second City Saints, CM Punk and Colt Cabana taking on the Briscoe Brothers in a two out of three falls match right. for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. Uh, the card also featured Samoa Joe versus Homicide for the Ring of Honor World Champion and Doug Williams versus Alex Shelley for the Ring of Honor Pure Champion. Ah. Night number two had nine matches main evented by the Second uh, the Second City Saints, CM Punk and Ace Steel. Taking on Dan and Math and BJ Whitmer right. in Asia. Excuse me, in a Chicago street fight. Other matches on the card, including Samoa Joe versus Colt Cabana for the Ring of Honor World Champion, mm -hmm. and Doug Williams versus Austin Aries for the Ring of Honor Pure Champion. Okay. 
Now, this marked the first one with a uh, double knight main or a double knight card for Ring of Honor, and there have been four other death before dishonors that had three or had two different knights. No show of Ring of Honor's had a third, and there I don't think Final Battle ever had a two nighter nor any other pay per view. It's always been death before dishonor. Really? Mm hmm. Yep. Hmm. So this show. Ring of Honor or Death Before Dishonor 2014 is significant because this is the first Death Before Dishonor that featured NJPW stars. So, the NJPW Ring of Honor partnership was made official on February of 2014. Mm -hmm. This happened in July of 2014. The card featured the Young Bucks who were full-fledged in uh, uh, New Japan at this time. Right. And AJ Styles, who at that time was the IWGP heavyweight champion. Right. Uh, the And also, at this time, Red Dragon, Bobby Fish, and Kyle O'Reilly were the IWGP junior heavyweight tag team champions. Okay. There is a uh, person tweeting me, so that's Hooray. always fun. Now, here's the thing. Uh, Death Before Dishonor had some memorable, memorable moments and matches uh, over the course of Ring of Honor that has really instigated this. So, CM Punk won the Ring of Honor World Champion right before he signed with WWE right. at... Death Before Dishonor 3 by beating Austin Aries. He signed his WWE contract on this championship. Right. And this and that was the show right after mm -hmm. he won the Ring of Honor World Champion in Death Before Dishonor. There was a brand warfare that happened at this show. There was a um, team Ring of Honor, led by Samoa Joe, mm -hmm. taking on Team CZW, led by um, Chris Hero, mm -hmm. and this was a Cage of Death match at Ring or uh, Death Before Dishonor Four. Okay. Death Before Dishonor Nine, I believe it is. Xi, that's nine. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, it's eleven. I want to make sure. Oh, no, it's VI. I'm sorry. Oh, VI. That's six. That's six. This had probably one of the most legendary fatal four way elimination matches in Ring of Honor history. Also, number one, this was a uh, elimination uh, fatal four way match for the Ring of Honor World Champion. Right. The defending Ring of Honor World Champion was Nigel McGuinness. Obviously, you're doing good there. The other participants in this were Brian Danielson, Claudio Castagnoli, and Tyler Black. Nice. Think of that match, mm -hmm. especially at this time. That's insane. Right. And um, one match that I did, I could not find a really good, uh, like a really good picture for because it. I don't know why I couldn't find a really good picture for it, but I couldn't. But. Um, also, the All Night Express defeating the Briscoes in Ladder War 3 at Death Before Dishonor IX, which is 9. Right. That's 9. Yeah. Yeah, that's 9. Yep. Um, and there's only been there has only been one year that there has never been a Death Before Dishonor, and that was in 2020 for obvious reasons. Right. Because usually that happened in the summer, and there was something that was happening in the summer. And it was really funny. Uh, Pina Gallery and I, I think, what was it? A day before lockdown was official that we were going to go to No, that a, was the anniversary show. Yeah, it was an anniversary show. No, we were going to go to a Ring of Honor show, and the lockdown stated, like, the day before. Yeah. Ugh. It kills me. I actually was about to say something about that. I was going to say something anyway about it, because they're going to be coming back here, hopefully, this next year. But... Um, Death Before Dishonor has been around since the um, start of this pay-per-view. There have been a lot of great moments right. and a lot of great things about this pay-per-view. 
But Death Before Dishonor is great. I love Death Before Dishonor. I like anything um, Ring of Honor. Right. But Death Before Dishonor is always one of those peer reviews. I get excited about this like I do with SummerSlam. Right. Or um, All Out. Yep. Very much the same way. So when we come back, we're not only going to make Ring of Honor and Death Before Dishonor majestic again, but we're going to make pro wrestling majestic again. Thank God. 